shaking so hard that I had to press on. My family and my horses were counting on me. I made it to the other side of the first crossing and prepared for the second. This one would be deeper. I waited, knee deep, chest deep, when suddenly the ground gave way beneath me. I relied on Bess to take me across. She was a strong swimmer. I made it. Shaking so hard, I could hardly mount back on. I was grateful for the change of clothes. For my clothes were so wet, I had to leave them there. There was no way I could carry them. The next obstacle would be more difficult. The great, dismal swamp. This is the place were people hiding from the law, like robbers and escaped slaves, hid out. Lord knows what they would have done to me had they found Bess and I. It was so dark, I could not see my hand in front of my face. When whack, a branch knocked me off my horse, flat on my back. The wind was knocked out of me. I could hardly breathe. I stood up, shaking and panting. This was the hardest ride I had ever done. I mounted back up and kept going, galloping in the darkness, relying on Bess's eyes, for I could not see. I kept going until we reached a town, where I slowed Bess to a walk to keep her feet quiet on the cobblestone street. For in those days there were curtains. No one was to be on the street after dark. Constables would enforce those rules should you break them. A shout rang out, who goes there? I had two options. I could either turn myself in or run for it. I kept going running with Bess as fast as I could go. A gunshot rang out behind me, but I didn't dare look back. I kept going into the dark woods once more, relieved that I had made it through the town. I kept going for what seemed like forever, eternity, wishing that morning would come, when in the light of dawn, I smelled it the smoke of campfires. I had made it to General Skinner's encampment. My horses, 
my family and my home were saved. Thank you.